I want your friend. Alhamdulillah, ashadu ala ilaha illallah wa tula sharikala. Praise be to God. I bear witness there is no other God beside God and He has no partner. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Um, everyone can hear me okay? And no announcements? Charity, Charity this Sunday, 2 p.m. Uh, for the men, um, 12 and up, there's soccer today at 5. Um, all, I do have one announcement. I saw some people parking in front of some of the buildings out front. So just another reminder. I I'm not sure if everyone's aware, but be careful not to do that and to respect our neighbors, inshallah. Uh, okay, so my first sermon is about knowledge. And I know what you're all thinking, what does this bozo know about knowledge? Um, but <laughs> I'll tell you. So um, I want to start with this verse. Uh, I'm saying they rejected. In Surah 20, verse 114. Uh, it says, do not rush into uttering the Quran before it is revealed to you and say, my Lord, increase my knowledge. Um, and because of this verse, every day, one of my daily reminders is asking God to increase my knowledge. And I think there's, there's two aspects of knowledge. There's just general knowledge. Um, and it's interesting because uh, there's an audio um, where Rashad's talking about this. He says, the more, the more the human being is educated, the more they come closer to God. And I see this, funny enough, they were talking about uh, in that audio, like alcohol. Like the more you're educated actually on alcohol, you'll understand that it, you are not meant to imbibe such a drink. Um, so there's other examples like, you know, when I travel with Hannah, we go hiking. As we do these things, I, I try to learn about, for instance, like, the ecosystems in that area or how, why redwood trees are prevailing in certain regions in California. And when you do that, SubhanAllah, it makes you even more appreciative. And I feel like it really does make you understand God's system even more. That's, that's one aspect. And, and there is a verse in the Quran that talks about this, SubhanAllah. In Surah 35, 27, um, the subtitle says, God's Colorful Creations. Do you not realize that God sends down from the sky water whereby we produce fruits of various colors? Even the mountains have different colors. The peaks are white or red or some other color. And the ravens, and the ravens, oh, I think I deleted something. The ravens are black, if I remember correctly. <laughs> um, also, the people, the animals, and the livestock come in various colors. This is why the people who truly reverence God are those who are knowledgeable. God is almighty, forgiving. That's one aspect. Um, I'm not gonna touch too much on that, but I think there is immense value in educating ourselves um, and it can actually provide us with more insight in how we understand the Quran. Um, but what I did wanna talk about mostly in this sermon is, is Quranic knowledge. And most specifically, the things that will actually inhibit us from attaining that. Um, in, in Surah 34, verse six, God says, it is evident to those who are blessed with knowledge that this revelation from your Lord to you is the truth and that it guides to the path of the Almighty, the most praiseworthy. It, it takes knowledge to, to see the right path. Uh, am I too loud? I feel like it's loud, no? Okay. Um, and and the, the interesting thing about knowledge is it comes at you in stages. And... <laughs> Uh, this might, I hope this isn't too philosophical, but, but the, it, there's, in the very beginning, actually not even the very beginning, it could be, it could be different for everyone, but for a pro, it could be a prolonged amount of time. You don't even know what you don't know. And, and, and as you're studying the Quran, you start to see how the Quran reveals that knowledge to you. And it, it's funny, that verse I started with, it says, do not rush into uttering the Quran before it is revealed to you. Um, and you'll, you'll see, like, you have limited, this applies to everything, not just the Quran. You have a limited knowledge on something, and your perspective is completely limited to just what you know, and you're actually not even aware of what you don't know. Sorry if that's so, this sounds a little philosophical, but um, my point is that you'll have a concept, 
of the Quran. And I'll use a really rudimentary concept, like um, do not beat your wife. And someone would read that verse, or so actual, you know, they would read it and they wouldn't see like the subtitle. They would see, they would have the impression that you can beat your wife. But if you are to grow your knowledge of the Quran, you'd actually understand that by no means is any form of aggression or oppression permissible and that it, it, another concept informs the previous concept that you have and your knowledge begins to grow. Um, and there's a couple verses that talk about this. I want to read them, inshallah. Uh, in, in Surah 3, verse 7, he sent down to you this scripture containing straightforward verses, which, con which constitute the essence of the scripture, as well as multiple meaning or allegorical verses. Those who harbor doubts in their hearts will pursue the multiple meaning verses to create confusion and to extricate a certain meaning. None knows the true meaning thereof except God and those well-founded in knowledge. They say, we believe in this. All of it comes from our Lord. Only those who possess intelligence will take heed. I know the example I gave, none of us would have any issue with that. I'll actually dive in in my next sermon of like a more tangible example of how maybe some of us can be enlightened with more knowledge, inshallah. Um, in Surah 5, verse 101, O you who believe, do not ask about matters which, if revealed to you prematurely, would hurt you. If you ask about them in light of the Quran, they will become obvious to you. God has deliberately overlooked them. God is forgiver, clement. Others before you have asked the same questions, then became disbelievers therein. And this, this really stood out to me. Um, I remember I was actually talking to uh, one of Payam's friends that he passed the message to, and we were talking about, in this case, homosexuality. They had like fully accepted the message, and they, they got so hung up on homosexuality. And it's a really like taboo subject, religion and homosexuality, and there's so many things like for an outsider to try to comprehend, it's like really complicated. If anybody wants to talk to me about it, um, by all means, I'd love to go more into depth in person, but I had this conversation with them, and it was the thing that le like led them astray, basically, because they, they were focused on something that they were not basically ready to even understand. Um, the next thing I wanted to talk about in terms of how we can grow our knowledge is our interactions with each other, actually. Um, it's funny that our, by God's grace, we have this immense community, and I feel like we all can say that we learn from each other. Um, in, in a lot of instances, I would say that it's our natural tendency to focus on people's like inherent bad qualities. Um, however, I think that like if you were to change your perspective on like how we look at the believers around us, you would see that there is something that every person in this room, a quality that they could have that you could actually learn from. Uh, and this will actually provide you more insight on yourself, uh, God willing. And, and the Quran talks about this in the form of competition. Uh, in Surah 5, verse 48, 48, it says, you shall compete in righteousness. And I think the idea of competing in righteousness, <laughs> I don't, it's interesting because I feel like the word competition inherently kind of means something negative. It might mean like you have ego and it makes you want to be better than somebody. But the way I see it is like, I can see a quality in a person and I can be like, I don't have that quality and I want to have that quality and it, because it makes them closer to God and I want to be closer to God. And <laughs> I wasn't planning on talking about Half Dome, but LP talked about Half Dome in his sermon last week and he talked about, you know, his fear of heights. Um, and, and, you know, I was, he was talking about it, and I was, like, thinking in my head. I, I, I had, like, PTSD. I was, like, yeah, it was, like, probably the most horrifying thing I've ever done. And I'm thinking, like, dude, this, like, LP is really not stressing how horrifying it was because you were talking about your fear of heights. Um, so, it, like, to understand what we did and the weakness that LP has, it's, like, unfathomable. Um, I have never in my life prayed to God that I, I don't want to die. <laughs> I, I'm not kidding. Like, I was thinking about Hannah and the child in her stomach. 
I was like, this is, like you're on this incredibly steep, slick granite, and all you have are these two cables. There was this girl in front of us having a panic attack like, and I'm not exaggerating, she was like, I don't know what to do. I can't go up, I can't go down. And I'm just like, what, how am I here right now? <laughs> I'm, I'm doing that, okay? LP has the fear of heights. By God's grace, nothing scares me. Uh, no, that sounds weird. Uh, in, in terms of adventure, I'm very willing to do almost anything by God's grace. That, I was like, how is this legal? Um, but I feel like by God's grace to overcome such a weakness in that I, I'm, I feel very confident to say like it was us around you that made you feel compelled. Like these guys have no apprehension to do this. Like I should work on why this is the case. And that is exactly how I think like competing in righteousness allows us to further inform ourselves in terms of like being righteous, being closer to God. Um, I kind of had to wedge that story in. I was like, LP, you've just totally glossed over like the weight of what we did. He was like, I just figured you would talk about it in your sermon. Uh, so I had to talk about it. Um, in Surah 12, verse 76, it says, We exalt whomever we choose to higher ranks. Above every knowledgeable one, there is one who is even more knowledgeable. Again, kind of speaking to what I was just talking about, this idea of accepting that there, are, that there is knowledge beyond you, and, and that is in other people, um, or other, other submitters. Um, where was I going? Okay, I'm going to skip over this for the sake of time. All right. The last thing I wanted to talk about, and I think this might be I don't want to say the most important in terms of knowledge, but the most important in terms of me wanting to share this with everybody here. Um, and, and I would say one of the biggest inhibitors for us and being closer to God in terms of our understandings of Quranic concepts has to do with our ego. Um, and the problem with this is, unfortunately, I think a lot of, we, we attach ourselves to our arguments and when we do that, we actually end up losing the ability to listen and hear what the other side is saying to you. Um, and by no means, you could very well actually have the right understanding. And by no means am I, am I advocating that you compromise that. I think the key part here is that when you are in these discussions, your ego is not a part of it, and you are listening to who you're talking to because that'll actually help you in your argument to understand them. Um, and this is interesting, there is, an, there is an audio, I have all the audio cited, I just figured it does serves no purpose to like reference or cite them, so ask me if you're curious. Um, he says, God teaches us to listen and not talk to, oh sorry, uh, no that's not it. He says, we were designed with one mouth and two ears. He says, that means like listen and shut up. Um, and it's, an, it's, it's really important. Um, like I was saying before, one thing I see constantly is, is us or, or certain people rephrasing the other argument in an incorrect way. And uh, I see that it doesn't ha it's not just one sided. It, it's like I've seen this a lot on multiple sides of any argument. And, and to me, it shows that we are not effectively listening. And it's, it's so important that we listen to the people we're talking about. Because if you are actually listening to them, you have to understand their argument from their perspective, not their perspective grounded in your understanding, if that makes sense. Uh, because if you can do this, you can either, one, once you understand what they're actually saying and where they're coming from, you can either, one, restructure your argument to help better convey what you're saying for them to understand you, or you're reconsidering your position because you're actually understanding what they're saying. Um, in Surah 16, verse 78, God brought you out of your mother's bellies knowing nothing, and he gave you the hearing, the eyesight, and the brains that you may be appreciative. Every single one of these things are, are tools for us to take in information. God doesn't say he gave us a tongue. We have the hearing, the eyesight, and the brain. 
Um, now I want to, uh, the, Hannah bought this book from Jordan Peterson, The King of Incels. Um, and I, there, was one, um, there was one passage I was reading, and it was really interesting. And I thought it was topical for this sermon. So I'm just going to read it, inshallah. People think they think, but it's not true. It's mostly self-criticism that passes for thinking. True thinking is rare, just like true listening. Thinking is listening to yourself. It's difficult. To think, you, to think you have to be at least two people at the same time. Then you have to let those people disagree. Thinking is an internal dialogue between two or more different views of the world. So listen to yourself and those with whom you are speaking. Your wisdom then consists not of the knowledge you already have, but the continual search of knowledge, which is the highest form of wisdom. That last sentence, obviously, I don't agree with. But the gist of what he's saying, I very much do agree with. Um, okay, I'm going to close this sermon, inshallah, with this verse. In Surah 2, verse 225. God, there is no other God besides him, the living, the eternal. Never a moment of unawareness or slumber overtakes him. To him belongs everything in the heavens and everything on earth. Who could intercede with him except in accordance with his will? He knows their past and their future. No one attains any knowledge except as he wills. His dominion encompasses the heavens and the earth, and ruling them never burdens him. He is the most high, the great. So to close, I would just say pray to God to humble you and to constantly seek knowledge and to pray that you can be as close to God as possible. At this point, let's repent. To be alone. Alhamdulillah, shadu ilaha ilaha and la wa la sharika la. Praise be to God. I bear witness there is no other God beside God and he has no partners. Um, I wouldn't say, in my next sermon I wanted to talk about kindness and compassion. I think there are some parallels, or not parallels, connecting points between the two sermons so I thought they would go well with each other. But I definitely wanted to bring this up because I think that inshallah we all including myself, have something to learn about how, what, how God tells us to be with each other. Um, so I'm going to start with this verse, Qualities of the Believers, Surah 48, uh, verse 29. Muhammad, the messenger of God, and those with him are harsh and stern against the disbelievers, but kind and compassionate amongst, amongst themselves. Um, and to understand the weight of what it is to be kind and compassionate, um, you know, who here has read Of Mice and Men? It's a pretty popular book. I was expecting to see more high school hands up, but uh, I actually, I read it in high school. I read it again when I was like a young adult. Um, and it's a really awesome book. There was one quote in this book, probably most of you won't remember because it was just a total random side character. But I love the way John Steinbeck described this person. He said, his tone was friendly. It invited confidence without demanding. Um, and I find that to be such a reflective quality of how I think we should be as submitters with each other because it shows that you are, um, when you're talking with somebody, you're disarming them to feel completely comfortable to talk with you. Um, and you know, it's interesting that the messenger defines the believers as pussycats with one another. Um, and it's such, a, it's such a funny word. I think like if anyone were to call, if I were to call like one of my friends a pussycat, they'd be like, what the heck are you saying? Like, um, but it's, it has to do with like how delicate we are when we're handling like our communications with each other. Um, and this is incredibly important in, oh, I don't have the verse number here. But in one of the verses, it says, keep our hearts from harboring any hatred towards those who believed. Our Lord, you are compassionate, most merciful. I don't know if I'm wrong in this, but it's interesting because keep our hearts from harboring any hatred towards the believers. And the way I see it, it, it means that you can harbor, like that's a p potential. And you don't just harbor hatred. I don't just like see someone sitting there and I just start feeling hatred towards them. That means that there are conflicts that might lead you to feeling that way. 
Um, and I see that we are put in these positions and unfortunately it is, on our, it is in our nature to like lose our tolerance and our patience with one another. Um, but just for perspective, the way I think about it is that everyone in this room and a few other communities um, around the world, like we are, these are the smartest people in the world. And, and to think that like we don't have patience or tolerance, I feel like this sounds a little cliche, but it, it is really true once you, you know, read the verses of the Quran and how it talks about us as, as believers. It says, wisdom, a great treasure. In Surah 2, verse 269, only those who possess intelligence will take heed. Um, and if I am being generous with numbers, I think this is generous. I would say there's a, let's say there's a thousand submitters in the world. Am I off? Is there more? Let, probably less. Um, if we were to say there's a thousand submitters, there's 7.75 billion people in the world. That means there is 0.000013% of the population are people who possess intelligence. And I, was, I Googled, I was like, how do I say that number? Like 0.00013, it's 1300 thousandth. Um, so that doesn't mean anything. So if you are trying to think about this, just say, wow, there's only 0.000013% of us. Um, in Surah 3, verse 110, the best community. You are the best community ever raised among the people. You advocate righteousness and forbid evil, and you believe in God. If the followers of the scripture believed, it would be better for them. Some of them do believe, but the majority of them are wicked. Um, and one thing I, I forgot to say, I think it's really easy to be kind and compassionate when like everything is fine. Like, it's, it's not challenging, I think, at all, for, I would say, pretty much all of us. When it matters is when we have disputes. Like, kindness and compassion matters when there is friction or we disagree on certain topics. One thing I do not agree with, and I would love to talk about this more in Quran study or, you know, after this sermon, there's one verse in the Quran that talks about believers fighting. And I found that whenever there's bickering and back and forth, this is the verse that people rely on to basically justify why they're continuing the discussion, or debating and fighting. Um, so I'm gonna read these verses. Uh, in Surah 49, verse nine and 10. Reconcile the believers. If two groups of believers fought with each other, you shall reconcile them. If one group aggresses against the other, you shall fight the aggressing group until they submit to God's command. Once they submit, you shall reconcile the two groups equitably. You shall maintain justice. God loves those who are just. And then in the following verse, it says the real family. The believers are members of one family. You shall keep the peace with, within your family and reverence God that you may attain mercy. The way I understand the first verse that's talking about us fighting, I don't use, I don't read this and take that lightly. I see this as like, Two groups of people are fighting each other. Not, they're not bickering with each other or one person said something that was like borderline offensive and then the other person was like, how dare you? And then they start, like to me, I, I see these as completely different things. As long as somebody falls under the umbrella of a submitter, a believer, you uphold what God tells us to do in terms of how we treat each other. Um, Rashad, in his words, he says, by divine decree, we are one eternal family. And this is, I think, a, a complicated thing to understand. And for, from my perspective, I remember like, w that transition from when I wasn't a sincere believer to like, when I started taking this religion seriously, I remember like, my, how I was with my friends. Like, I loved these friends. I was super close with them. Um, and I got along, like we were all, the, like imagine me times four. There was like four of us, like we loved each other and we were super close <laughs> with each other. And then I came to submission and it's like all these different, radically different personalities than mine. Like Hosein and I are best friends. We have like nothing in common with each other. <laughs> the idea of us being family, I actually see it like kind of like real life. Like I was closer with my friends than I was my uncle, but my uncle, there is this unspoken respect and 
like they're your family, and because they're your family, you love them and respect them regardless of who they are. Um, even though we actually, <laughs> I'm not going to get into it. But <laughs> um, my point being is that that relationship kind of applies with all of us, like brothers and sisters, uncles and aunts, grandmas, grandpas, depends how old you are. Um, we're all a family. Um, and that's in incredibly important, I think, for us in terms of our perspective and how we treat each other. The real family. Um, in, in Surah 2, verse 237, you know, this is a verse that's talking about uh, divorcees, like people who have divorced from each other. And it says, you shall maintain the amicable relations among you. Now, not all, not all divorces are like, chill and like, hey, you know, this isn't really working, like, let's see other people. I mean, some are that, like that, and it's just super amicable, and that's amazing by God's grace. But like, a, a lot of divorces are messy, and still, it says you shall maintain, God encourages, it, it encourages us to maintain those amicable relations among each other, um, even in these, uh, these situations that it would be incredibly difficult. Um, and that is, I think, one of the most amazing things about this religion is that it forces us to overcome these things. I think, uh, imagine a group of friends and they have a, f a falling out or a fight. Like that's pretty, that's like it. If you guys know people outside of Mashhad, they're just not gonna really talk to each other ever again. <laughs> like if you have an issue with someone here, you are seeing them like three or four times a week and it might be super awkward, but actually it, eventually somebody caves and they have to kill their ego, even though I, both you would encourage both sides to, to want to strive and take that effort. Um, how am I on time? Okay, almost got to wrap this up. Um, Surah 49, verse 11, Believers set the example. O you who believe, no people shall ridicule other people, for they, may, for they may be better than they. Nor shall any women ridicule other women, for they may be better than they. Nor shall you mock one another or make fun of your names. Evil indeed is the reversion to wickedness after attaining faith. Anyone who does not repent after this, these are the transgressors. Um, this is, okay, this is funny. It says, uh, you, you, you no know people shall ridicule other people for they may be better than they. The way I see compassion, I see compassion goes both ways. That means like, uh, like for instance, I've heard this before. Like, dude, this person's been on the path for like five years, 10 years, 15 years, and they're like still doing what they're doing. And, and they, they kind of use that to justify whatever <laughs> return behavior they want to give to that individual. Um, this is, I see nothing disqualifies any person in this room, any believer, from compassion. That's how I see it. If you are a believer, I'm going to, I have to be compassionate with you. And if I don't, then I'm breaking a commandment. And I, and I think that this is how we should all see it. Um, again, if you guys want to have this discussion further, I think we should definitely talk about it in Quran study. Um, but what's interesting is then we, we deal, you know, we might have to deal with certain individuals' weaknesses. And then we use this verse to basically defend ourselves and how we treat them. Um, in Surah 2, verse 189, it says, Do not beat around the bush. It is not righteous to beat around the bush. Righteousness is attained by upholding the commandments and being straightforward. You shall observe God that you may succeed. Um, using straightforwardness as a guise for like, mistreating somebody is not right. It, actually, I think, funny enough, this, this falls into, I think, that same concept I was talking about where you, have, you might have like limited knowledge and then something else informs your previous bit of knowledge. You are to be straightforward, but if you were to understand the Quran, you would understand that under all circumstances, you are compassionate and kind with believers. Um, this meaning, like, you can be like, how many times are you going to do this, like, in our masjid? Instead, like, like I said, nobody is disqualified from, from receiving compassion from believers. Instead, you go... I don't understand what's bothering you. Like, let's talk about it. Like, express yourself calmly. We're here to listen. Like, like, I'm just saying this as an example of how I think sometimes we rationalize why we have certain behavior. And what I'm trying to say is both, everyone has to be compassionate with each other, no matter if someone is, you find someone to be abrasive 
or if you find the other person to be rude, or you think the other person is saying something that is chronically not right. Um, again, exercising patience, compassion, tolerance with each other is incredibly vital for having peace in this community. Um, in Surah 5, verse 54, O oh, you who believe, if you revert from your religion, then God will substitute in your place people whom he loves and who love him. They will be kind with the believers, stern with the disbelievers, and will strive in the cause of God without fear of any blame. Such is God's blessing. He bestows it upon whomever he wills. God is bounteous, omniscient. And I just, look, the reason I read this verse was to highlight how we are to be stern with the disbelievers, whereas I see a lot of stern behavior in, in this masjid. Uh, just something to consider. Okay, I'm gonna wrap it up with a couple of verses. In Surah 5, verse 13, God loves those who are benevolent. Uh, in Surah 3, verse 159, the messenger's kindness. It was mercy from God that you became compassionate towards them. Had you been harsh and mean-hearted, they would have abandoned you. Therefore, you shall pardon them and ask forgiveness for them and consult them. Um, in Surah 11, verse 75, Indeed, Abraham was clement, extremely kind, and obedient. Obviously, in this verse, Abraham being an example for us as believers. And I'll close with this verse, inshallah. Treat each other amicably. Surah 17, verse 53. Tell my servants to treat each other in the best possible manner, for the devil will always try to drive a wedge among them. Surely the devil is man's most ardent enemy. Um, and and the Rashad explains this in an audio. He says, believers are brothers and sisters and are one family, so Satan does his best to get in the way. And inshallah, under all circumstances, we don't let that happen. Okay, Allah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illallah. Allahu Akbar. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Maliki al-Madin. Iya kana abdu wa iya kana astain. Ehdina sirat al-Mustaqim. Sirat al-Ladina anam ta'alayhim. Gair al-Magdubi alayhim walad dalin. Allahu Akbar. Bismillahu al-Man Hamdulillah. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Malik Yawmuddin. Iyaka nabadu wa iyaka nasta'in. Ihdina sirat al-mustaqim. Sirat al-ladina anamta alayhim. Gair al-makdubi alayhim walad dalin. Allahu Akbar. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum.